Hey, how y'all doing out there? This is Pete over at DIY Auto School, and I've showed you several tech tips that basically apply to all uh, old classic, or I would, might say Ford. How y'all doing out there? This is Pete over at DIY Auto School, and my camera looks like shit. How y'all doing out there? This is Pete over at DIY Auto School, and I've showed you quite a lot of tech tips. How you doing? This is Pete over at DIY Auto School, and I've shown you several tech tips on using this car as an example of what you're going to run into when you're restoring an old classic vintage American car such as this. Now this is a muscle car era vehicle. This isn't like um, a 1950s or 40s. This isn't a rat rod. This isn't a, this isn't a street rod. This is a muscle car. This is a Mustang. Um, all manufacturers basically followed each other's footsteps. And when I say that, and we're going to go ahead and use this, the 1967 Camaro, which was made in America, as an example. And if you look right here where the bumper goes, you can see there's the the uh, lip that overrides and then the bumper goes below that. I want you to pay close attention how that bumper bolts on. And if you look right there, there's the mounting holes. You got two on the left side and then you got two more on the right side. And then if we look at the back of the Mustang, which is two years earlier, you can see basically the same operation. You got two holes on the right side and then you got two holes on the left side. So most American cars are basically all put together the same way. If you take one or two cars apart that are different manufacturers, you're basically going to be able to do all of them because they're all basically the same. They use the same style nuts and bolts, this, that, and the other. Now there is uh, several washers, nuts and bolts that might apply to one vehicle that doesn't apply to the other vehicle, but basically they're all the same. And what we're looking at in this picture, this is a re bumper. Now this is a factory original bumper, and I strongly, strongly suggest that if you have your old bumpers, do not get rid of them. You want to use the original bumpers if possible because the aftermarket ones do not fit properly. They do not line up like they're supposed to. And if you have to get them re and I'm talking about the original ones, you're better off spending an extra dollar having them re chrome like we've done over here. You can see the high quality chrome job that we got. All right. And this bumper was wrecked very hard. And I'm going to show you uh, a little example here. And if you look right in here, you can see where all the dents are where they hit it with a hammer. All right. Using their, ham their specialty hammers to straighten this bumper out. This bumper was wrecked. The owner requested that he just buy a brand new one, and I suggested that he doesn't do that because what's going to happen is it won't fit right, especially when we're working on a car that's a one owner car. All the body panels are original. The car's in excellent shape. We want to try to keep everything the same. So we went ahead and got this bumper re chrome, and the brackets were pretty rotted out and dented, okay? When I say rotted out and dented, I'm talking about the brackets were bent, so we had to buy some aftermarket brackets. And on the Mustang, this is the bracket that we're using. This is the factory style bracket. I don't know if this is going to line up or not. I'm crossing my fingers and I'm hoping it will. But when you install these, and this video isn't about the bumper, this is about using the proper hardware. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more.
And if you look at my tabletop here, my workbench, you're going to see there's all kinds of hardware. And I got a lot of brand new stuff here, a lot of brand new hardware that's uh, designed for the Ford Mustang. And then I also got some used hardware mixed in with the new stuff. Um, when the owner tore this vehicle apart uh, back in 1982, he threw all the nuts and bolts in a cup, or should I say several cups, put lids on them, and then stored them away. And then, of course, uh, 40 years later when my friend Pete gets a hold of it, or 35 years later, we can't find all the nuts and bolts, so now we're playing mix match and try to design and figure out where everything goes. So I've had to rely on using new stuff versus trying to find the old stuff. And this is what I'm trying to get at right here. Most guys, when they're painting their cars, they're putting them back together, they aren't really thinking of using the proper hardware that was designed for that car. And when I say that, I'm going to go ahead and come over here and see if I can find the hardware we're talking about. Now I lost it. Uh, what's going on here? Where's all my... Okay, here we go right here. And from the factory, this is the style washer that was used on this bumper. This is a factory lock washer that is used. Another thing that was used on this particular bumper is a lock nut. You can see how it looks egg-shaped right there. I don't know if you can notice that, but that is a factory style lock nut that is designed to be used with the factory style lock washer. So, when we put this back together, of course, I'm going to take the chrome nuts that we had re-chromed. You can see that. This is an acorn nut that we had re-chromed. I'm going to go ahead and stick that back in there, just like this. And then I'm going to take the factory washer with the factory style nut and I'm going to go ahead and put that on there. Because I know it seems a little bit weird and unusual. Um, why should we use the factory stuff when they got other washers and lock washers and flat washers out there in the world to use? Why do we have to rely on using the factory style stuff? And I'm going to tell you why here in a minute. Now, if you look real close, you can see that I went ahead and I replaced the nut and washer with a brand new style nut and washer, which is factory. Now, what most people would do in this particular case is they would go to their local hardware store and they would possibly buy a nut like this. And you can see on the back of this nut, if you look real close, you can see that it's got a lock type washer built onto it. Now, I don't remember the quite name of this. Let's see if it has a name on here. It's called a flanged hex nut. This is a flanged hex nut. This is a five grade nut. And when they say flange, they're talking about that. But the problem when you use a nut like that, on a situation like this, is that you possibly might run into the problem of this nut from the vibration of this old classic car will eventually wear this hole out and it'll start cracking it out and eventually the bumper will either fall off or it will cause body damage to the car. And I'm going to go ahead and slide this in here just to show you the difference of what we're talking about. And I can put this flange nut on here and this flange nut will work. It's the same thread. And then, if you look, you can see the difference automatically what's going on here. Another problem you have using a flange nut like this versus the factory washer and the factory lock nut is that, once again, vibration will eventually loosen this nut up and then it will back itself off and then your bracket and your bumper will be doing this at a very, very minute uh, imperfection. You probably won't even notice it. But just from rubbing like this right here, we'll eventually crack that out, and then this bracket will fall off, or it'll get worse like this. And then the bumper end will start moving around, hitting the body of your car. So it's always very, very important, let me get this off, to use the factory washers and nuts 
that are supplied from the factory itself, the OEM style. And then we'll go ahead and take an impact. Make sure that that's tight on the bumper. And one other thing I want to show you about the bolt is if you look right there, you can see that this is a square-headed bolt. And when I say that, I'm talking about, you can see it's a square which will fit into the bumper so you don't have to have a wrench on the other side. That's very important to use these when you're installing a bumper bracket onto the vehicle itself. And then when we turn the bumper over, you can see how nice that looks. Looks really, really nice. It came out great. These are the original bolts that came with this bumper. And I think this thing's ready for installation. And then, if you look right here, you can see if you use all the factory style hardware, everything should be going back together exactly how it came off. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, telling you that in some cases it's good to use this but in most cases this is better we'll see you later take it easy and i hope these tech tips that i'm showing you on this car are helping you out um like i was telling you before the same era american car they're basically all built the same they all got the same type of technology to them am i right maybe the body shop girl yes absolutely if you can tear this car apart and put it all back together you can basically do the exact same thing to that 1967 Camaro in the back. We'll see you later. Take it easy. And this one here is ready to go. What do you think? Just wash her off. Wax her up. And we got to do a little polishing on it. Clean it up real good. A few places we got a buff on it. And down the road she goes. Take it easy. Thanks for watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.